Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Dogwood Springs Outdoors. If this is your first time here, thanks for checking us out. If you're a subscriber, very grateful for your support in that. Um, live on a small acreage, small farm in North Mississippi. We've got about 30 acres. So most of the videos I do are uh, a lot of repair and maintenance on equipment and see things that I have around here just that, that might be helpful, but it is kind of across the board. So anything that's going on that I feel like might be useful to somebody on YouTube, I, I try to record and share that. It just seems like, you know, the hand-me-down experience from parents and grandparents and family members is harder to come by these days than it used to be. But today we're talking about pigs. Uh, well, this is my first time with pigs. I got them is kind of a trial run as feeder pigs to see how it went. I was really well set up for it. I didn't have to do a lot of work in the, the front end. And so I have other videos on some of that preparation, but I had a, a old chain link dog pen that's about 50 by 50. And so I built a shelter in that and then I ran a hot wire around the bottom. And essentially that's it. Other than, than coming up with a feeder and watering system, that's all they, they needed. And also it's close to electricity. So for the hot wire, just plug straight in and, and didn't have to uh, worry with the solar charger or anything like that. Not everybody's as fortunate and I get that. You just kind of got to work with what you have. Um, but anyway, the plan was I was expecting to to be able to process these around the middle of October. But the way they're headed, it looks like it's going to be maybe a month ahead of that. Um, and we're going to probably try to get a little more info on that today. I was going for 250 pounds. I don't know if I said that already, but uh, they were already, two weeks ago, they had already were really close, right at 200. Um, now, I don't have scales or anything, and that's that's one of the main things I was going to show you today is how I'm, I'm calculating weights by measurement. And then I was also going to show you what I ended up using as a feeder that has just been they saved me a lot of money. The, again, it's something I already had, but even if you buy it, uh, it's cheaper than most pig feeders. So just wanted to share that with you guys, and hopefully I can get this in there. I was hoping I'd have a kid, one of my kids to film me, but they're full of business today. Uh, and so hopefully I can get this, this tripod in there and film this without the pigs knocking everything over. But let's move over to the, to the pig pen. So here we are. Here are two pigs. If you saw the first video, they about turned into hogs now. The brown one's the male and is much more curious and friendly than the female, but he will also sneak up behind you and taste you if you let him. So the main thing, so the main thing, your measurements you're getting are the girth and the length. And the girth is just around the, you know, call it the heart girth. It's right behind their uh, front legs. And the length is from the base of the ears to the base of their tail. He has also been much more forgiving as far as and willing to let me handle him. But just since they've been young, I've handled them a lot. Tried to rub on them when I was feeding them to get them used to that kind of they're they're ready to eat now so having to hold off but um anyway the really still the only way i can measure them is when i bring them a slop like they won't they won't be still and let me do it when i'm when it's just regular pellet feed but so what you all what you're doing there's several ways and there's actually online calculators to do that but there you just um you square the girth which, so you measure the girth, then multiply it times itself, and then multiply that times the length and divide by 400. So that's supposed to give you the, the uh, estimate weight. Now it's obviously not as good as scales, but it, I mean, when you're really trying to figure out when you're ready, I have a little bit of a benefit, or a, uh, I guess a, an aid was because my, I, with my English Mastiffs, my male is, big he's 230 pounds and so they always come over here with me and it's a good gauge even though they're built different you know you, you still gives you a pretty good uh idea of what you're looking at when you get one next to the other all right 
We're gonna try this. See how it goes. See if I can get it. I don't know if this is gonna be it. Need a soft tape, like a fabric tape. This is more like a rubbery plastic, but it's easier, easier to clean. Also, if they've been in the slop, I purposely haven't sprayed them today. So, because you don't want to be reaching underneath them when you get that. So he's 45 and a half. So he's he's grown up a good bit. Bye. Forty-eight, actually forty-seven. I went a little far down on that. No, just to show you her. If you can hear me. She will. She's gonna jump. But the good thing is they're pretty close. She's been a little bit bigger than him, but he's about caught up at this point. See, I'm just trying to get her used to it. Come on, Gertie. There you go. That's, she's 48 and a half. A 44. All right, so we're gonna take those measurements and do some calculations. So this is my feeder and water. Like I said, this is an old uh, dog pen with chain link fence. You can probably see that the hot wire around the bottom. That's a 15 gallon drum that I'm using. I just put the one nipple in there. My only problem with that has been, you know, that they pull on it, pull it out. And I also put a little concrete under it because that's, if you don't do that, you're going to end, they're going to make a uh, wallow right there below it. And especially if they're smaller, it get, they'll make it so deep that then they can't reach the waterer anymore. So concrete, something like that's a good idea. But really, this is <clears throat> what I was showing you. This I already had, but even if you buy one, and I did a ton of research about it, <clears throat> trying to see if it would work, if anybody was doing this. And I could not find a mention of it anywhere. But in, in, this is just an old, like I say, automatic dog feeder that's still available. You can still buy it, and they're cheaper than pig feeders. Now, if you had hogs, I think, you know, that we're talking like 500 pounds, I don't think this is practical. But if you're like me and just have a couple of uh, pigs you're just raising to, to uh, slaughter, this has worked really well. I thought they would, it's a little, they've been it just a little bit, fighting over getting in there. But normally they take turns. As long as they're not hungry, then they're not going to tear it. They haven't torn it up too bad. Maybe it's just my pigs, but it's a look I've had. So the biggest problem I've had with this is raccoons coming in and getting it at night. So I still have to do some trapping on that. But it has the, you know, the flip up back. And so I can just reach over this fence right here where this hog panel, which I took a section of the fence out and put a hog panel in there. So it'd be easy to fill these things without having somebody could do it without having to come in uh it'll hold probably about 30 pounds of uh feed but i haven't been putting that in there because the raccoons wear it out uh and then in the back i'll show you the back side just so you can see what it is because that's the biggest thing is is they will tear stuff up so i'm gonna step out and show you the view from the other side so here we go Another side, you can see I just put T-post behind both of these. The water is set up on concrete blocks. And if you have like the half blocks, those are good for when they're small and then you can just move them up. But, but then I like these because you can actually stick the post down in there and it's harder for them to move the blocks or anything about that. I don't know. Let me see if it's showing up on camera a little bit. Down here, that's where the raccoon's been digging out. He's going under right here. But, uh... So these holes were already in the feeder for hanging it. Um, and I just tied, you know, some heavy gauge wire through that. And I got it tied around the post and through the fence. They were still 
swinging the bottom from side to side. So I drill two holes in the bottom, not not at the very bottom, but, but back, you know, about I don't know, three inches high. So I could put another wire in there to make it more stable. And that, since I've done that, it's worked really well. But that's it as far as the uh, feed and water go. I'm gonna go ahead and add some water right here, but it's, you know, like I say, it's nice because you can just uh, unscrew that, fill it back up, clean it back out. When it's hot, like today, it's supposed to be 97. Uh, it's another good thing. Got a lot of shade in here, so they like that. But I uh, <clears throat> will come over here with the water hose. That's another big thing is having access to water um, so you don't have to haul it. But I, I have a fairly long hose and a frost-free hydrant over there. And so I'll spray them down, and, and they have a, a wallow that I try to use. Kind of pick your spot so it's not right in front of the... Uh, gate or your access point but anyway this hog panel has made a world of difference being able to just access this stuff the gate's about five feet i mean not the gate sorry the chain link's about five feet tall five to between five and five and a half i think it was cut so it's not it may not be exact uh from its original size but anyway it uh i could reach over it but not really anybody else i'm six three and not really anybody else in my family was able to do that well so this has just made it easier for anybody to come over here and, and and you can just step over it versus going through the gate all in all it's been a good system but we'll fill up the the uh water that lasts me it depends on how hot it is but that lasts probably four or five days um or could last i didn't you know the the nipple's not at the bottom didn't want because if you let it get too light if you put the nipple too low then it makes it a lot easier for them to uh, uh, get the whole tank off and tear it up. So I'm also, I'm keeping up with how much I spend on feed. And if we continue doing this, I will, uh, it'll be based on the value that we're getting out of it. I know I can do it and it's not too hard. I mean, it's, it's a time commitment, but otherwise that's it. Uh, they're easy. Two pigs, I'm not having really any issue with smell. If it rains a lot, we get a little bit, but they're pretty far away from the house. Um, and a whole lot of that's gonna have to do with, I think, the size of your enclosure. Uh, but anyway, I'm keeping up with all the spin on feed, and so I'll be able to determine what it costs me per pound. And I know it's different for everybody. And these measurements that I gave too, I mean, that's good. that could very well be different based on the type of pig that you have, you know, the breed of pig. That <laughs> snorts laying in the in the little bit of cool where the the nipple drips out there, and they'll do that too. You think they're drinking that much water, but they're not. They're just they're just running it out, making their own wet spot there so they can lay in it. Uh, but we'll fill it up and hose them down. Just about half full, maybe a little more. But another good thing about popping it off or adding it is when it's this hot is it, it cools it down. And they like that a lot better too than drinking hot water. She used to be like scared of the water. If you spray her, she would run to the uh, shelter back there, hide. And you, usually they would, once you hit them with water, they'd run over there and rub on the trees and all that and itch and everything. But as you can tell, she doesn't have that issue anymore. He's always been happy to just run straight in it and let you spray him directly. Anyway, this was timed. Normally I try to keep it at least wet in there, but because uh, I knew I was gonna measure them, I did not. We also just, we don't have a um, stock trailer of any kind, and obviously you have to have something, so take that into consideration. 
be thinking about that if you're looking at getting pigs before you get them. Uh, I have a neighbor that uh, has agreed to let me use hers. And the processor, if you, I mean, if you're not doing it yourself, which you certainly can, we don't really have the space. I'm just not really set up for that. So we're gonna try this uh, with the processor this time and see how it goes. It's obviously, if you do it yourself, it'll save you a lot of money, but then you also need to have, if you don't already have it, you'd have to get the equipment. Um, to process, to do the processing. I think that's gonna do it. That ought to keep them cool for the rest of the day. So again, took those measurements. He was 45 and a half girth. So multiplied that times itself and then times 47 for the length and uh, divided that total by 400. And that came out to like 243 for him. And then her uh, female was like 234, somewhere around in there. Even she was longer, but her girth wasn't nearly as much. And again, it, you could hit it just a little different, or you know, if you, it's gonna get some variation because you could measure three times and probably get a different measurement every time. So, but it's still, it's still a good gauge. And main thing problem I've had with it is remembering it. Like I'll go in there and measure them. And by the time I get done watering and everything else, I've completely forgotten what it was. Uh, so write it down or put it on your notes on your phone or something like that. That's a pro tip. But anyway, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and uh, come back and see us.